Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're going to talk about VO2 max. We're going to show you what's a good score and what's not so good of a score. This really depends on things like gender, age, and sport. So maybe you're an athlete that just took a VO2 max test or a coach working with athletes. We're going to go over what's a good score and then also what does VO2 max actually mean so that way you know how to improve it. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so first let's start off by talking about what does VO2 max actually mean. So V stands for volume, O2 stands for oxygen, and max stands for maximal. So what this is really saying is it's the maximum volume of oxygen that your body can actually consume. And this is a lab test, so typically this is done in a laboratory with a oxygen mask, so something that's measuring the amount of oxygen you're breathing in and the amount of carbon dioxide you're breathing out. And what that's actually going to do is allow you to calculate oxygen delivery to the muscles. Typically this test is done on a treadmill and it typically takes about 8 to 12 minutes to really get a maximal oxygen consumption. If you're going in a shorter amount of time, uh, you don't actually have enough time for your body to warm up and progressively increase the oxygen that it's consuming as you approach higher intensity. So that's why it's a progressively staged test. There's different protocols for how you can run it such as the Bruce protocol, but either way, it's gonna be a progressively more and more difficult test as you go through until your body is at the maximum amount of oxygen consumption and you basically give up. And from experience doing this test, and I'm gonna show you guys my results actually at the end of the video, it's a very hard test and it's really difficult towards the end to keep going and keep going. There's gonna be a point where as the treadmill speeds up faster and faster, you're just gonna to have to quit. And usually that's uh, whenever your oxygen consumption is plateauing anyway, and at that point, you're done. <laughs> If the test was done right, you should be reaching your maximal heart rate at the end of the test, and that should correspond with your VO2 max. Uh, there's actually an equation for VO2 max, and that equation is cardiac output times A minus V O2 difference. So that A standing for arterial minus V venous. So basically, the arterial minus the venous oxygen supply would tell us the difference or the amount of oxygen that actually left the blood between the time it was in the arteries and the time it got to the veins. So what that basically means is that some amount of oxygen was delivered and then that multiplied by the amount of blood that was pumped is going to tell you how much oxygen your body actually consumed. Okay, so to start off, what's an average score for a 20 to 29 year old male or female? For a 20 to 29 year old female, an average score would be around 38 and that's measured in milliliters per kilogram per minute. An average score for a male would be around 44 milliliters per kilogram per minute. So what does that number actually mean? Milliliters is a volume per kilogram, meaning that the volume is relative to your body weight rather than an absolute number. And that's usually how VO2 max is expressed. And then per minute, and that's just saying that that's the amount that you're consuming in one minute. So for example, the average female consuming about 38 milliliters per kilogram per minute would be consuming 38 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of her body weight in one minute. So those are just the average scores. As you become older, generally speaking, your VO2 max will decline. And that's a function of worse oxygen delivery, cardiovascular changes, including decreased heart size, decreased max heart rate, and other physiological processes of aging. That said, endurance athletes do typically peak in their 20s to 30s, actually later than what a power athlete would be peaking at. So you could see athletes with a really high VO2 max even into their 40s as an endurance athlete. So what we went over was just the average numbers. If we look at someone in the 90th percentile, we would see about a score of 47 for females or 54 for males. Okay, so now let's break it down by sport. We're gonna look at the data from Neiman 1995 here. Really, VO2 max is most important for aerobic athletes anaerobic athletes need things like a high lactate threshold, strength, power, speed, other things. So the limiting factor for cross country runners, triathletes to run faster and perform better in their sport really is VO2 max. So that's why it becomes a really important metric. So when we're thinking about a sport that really doesn't have a large aerobic component, so sports like shot put, discus, baseball, football that have really short plays and rely on, for example, the ATP PC system, those sports really don't have a high demand for a high VO2 max. So for example, a male might be okay with a VO2 max around 45 to 50, and a female might be okay with a VO2 max around 35 to 40. And then in sports like basketball, hockey, tennis, 
sports that involve some aerobic component, they're gonna need a higher VO2 max. So for example, males might need about 52 to 56 in terms of their VO2 max, and females might wanna be around 44 to 48. So sports like soccer, distance swimming, and wrestling that do require a higher aerobic component, for those sports, we want athletes to have what's considered a high VO2 max. So for males, around 57 to 62, and for females, around 50 to 53. And sports like cross-country skiing and distance running are gonna require the highest VO2 max for males 70 plus and for females 60 plus to really excel in that sport. Okay, so let's pull up my results from the uh, lab test that I did in 2016. So this is a while ago on when I was doing an exercise science degree. Uh, you can see here the data. So you'll see that this was done in 2016, that I was 21 years old, uh, about 185 pounds. Um, at this point I was running recreational triathlons, but kind of like a mixed athlete, like I was probably lifting just as much as running. What I'll show you here next is the chart. So what you can see here is ventilation plotted against heart rate. So I was wearing a heart rate monitor and a breathing mask and it was taking measurements of ventilation and heart rate. And as you can see, as I got higher intensity of exercise, the ventilation went up, as you could expect, and heart rate went up, but it's not linear. So at first, heart rate's going up and ventilation's going up, but there's kind of a point whenever that slope of the dots rising starts to go even steeper. As you can see here, the blue dots are plotted against this line of best fit that's the aerobic component, and then these orange lines where it's sloped up steeper is where we transition to anaerobic. So the point where the two lines of best fit intersect is actually the lactate threshold. So if you look at the Excel sheet that I got from this test, you can see here uh, my absolute VO2 max was 4.77, but the number that we would usually use is relative to body weight, and that would be 56.79 milliliters per kilogram per minute, which is actually pretty good. Um, I was a recreational triathlete at the time, so you can see here my data. Um, you know, not the best, but uh, I was probably lifting in college and just trying to get big uh, at the time. But if you look at that transition to time, uh, apparently I am pretty good at tying my shoes quickly, so that's something, right? <laughs> so if you're wondering after all this, what do you actually do with a VO2 max number? Well, one, it's really effective for tracking progress over time. If you improve your oxygen delivery or if you improve your cardiac output, you will see a higher VO2 max number over time with training. And it can also be really helpful for establishing good training zones. For example, I do online strength training for endurance athletes, and the more you can dial in on numbers like your training zones, the more efficiently you can program intervals, tempo work, and things like that. All right guys, so I hope that video was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna learn more about exercise science, kinesiology, and strength conditioning, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. All right guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.